Tesla stock has not been having a good year and things have only gotten worse for their company after they just recently released their delivery numbers and they significantly underperformed analyst expectations. And you're kind of seeing a little bit of a civil war between a lot of the Tesla influencers all over social media, whether it be Twitter or YouTube. And we're going to go ahead and get into some of that. But first off, let's just talk about the fact that because make no mistake about it, there's a lot of hype stocks on social media. You know, you've got SoFi, you've got PayPal, you've got all these different things. And I know the PayPal people are going to be in the comments. It's not a hype stock. It's not a hype stock. Whatever. I get it. PayPal might be a buy right now. I'm not saying it's not. What I'm saying is these stocks have huge cults of people behind them. And if you say anything bad about these stocks, their communities are going to destroy you in the comments. That's all I mean when I say cult stocks. There is a cult of people who love these companies and love the stock. OK, so with Tesla. Um, which, again, is literally probably the number one biggest cold stock uh, on the Internet. It has been for a while. You know, you had stocks like GameStop and, and uh, GameStop and AMC. But, you know, the fan bases for those have kind of withered away a little bit. The one that has stood the test of time that just no matter what you do, it just won't go away is Tesla stock. There are channels on YouTube right now. There are uh, Twitter accounts, too. I mean, I would even look at somebody like a Gary Black who have hundreds of thousands of followers on YouTube and Twitter, just strictly talking about Tesla every day. That is literally all they do. But you're starting to see some of that bullishness in Tesla really start to crumble. And I mean more than before. And the reason why you're seeing that is because you are really seeing a significant pullback, for lack of a better word, in the growth story. Significant. I have never seen Tesla stock in more danger over the last few years than I have today, right now at this very moment. There were people who were mega bulls in this stock in 2020, 2021 when it went to the moon. Then Tesla started to go down a little bit. Uh, Tesla went down last year. Actually, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think Tesla went all the way down to like, matter of fact, I have the chart right here. I could just go ahead and look. Tesla went all the way down to like $113. Yeah, so January 6th of 2023, Tesla plunged, plunged pretty bad. And there were a lot of people who were starting to turn on the stock and become bearish. But to me, nothing that happened during that time compares to what we're seeing right now. And I think the reason why is because I think people are finally starting to wake up to the fact that Elon Musk might not be the best person for this company. And just to be completely clear, I am one of those people who are of the opinion that Tesla would run just fine without Elon. Yes, Elon did a great job building the company up. Yes, he did a good job doing it. I'm not saying he didn't. He was a instrumental piece in making Tesla what it is today. But I think that Tesla and their management is a well-oiled enough machine where if Elon were to leave, as long as he doesn't take anything with him, you know, as long as he just leaves and everything's fine, I think Tesla would be just fine. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. There are a lot of people in the Tesla community who believe the exact same thing. And now you are seeing a lot of people who are calling for Elon Musk to just either step down or just go away or for the love of God, just stop tweeting. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit of that. So first off, this article right here, people are calling this latest uh, deliveries uh, numbers from Tesla an absolute nightmare. And to be honest, it was a nightmare. It was beyond bad. It was unbelievably bad. The Wall Street estimates for deliveries for how many number of EVs that they were, you know, going to sell or at least delivered was 457,000. But Tesla only delivered 386,000 electric vehicles. Let me go ahead and say this again. Okay. Tesla only delivered 380,000 electric vehicles. Wall Street estimated they would deliver 457 thousand so it's one thing when you miss analyst expectations because we see stocks do that all the time however tesla has significantly and i mean significantly missed analyst expectations now some of the things that i did see from the bulls which i think might be actually be a decent point is they're saying that well as bad as those deliveries were tesla only fell about five or six percent on a day which any other stock would have fell like 15, 20%, which I agree with them. That's probably true. Another thing a lot of people said is that normally Tesla has their lowest amount of deliveries typically in Q1. That's typically what happens. So you have some bulls who are saying, well, obviously this wasn't good, but this is kind of normal for Tesla. We expect Tesla's deliveries to tick up at, uh, as we get to quarter two, quarter three, and so on. So, so I do want to be fair and say that, but I want to make clear my overall opinion. 
And I've been very clear on this channel. And if for some of you guys who don't remember what I've said about Tesla, let me go ahead and refresh your memories. I stand by the fact that Tesla is a good company. I'm not going to sit here and be a clown and just straight up lie or be a hater and say that Tesla is the worst thing ever when they're selling a crap ton of vehicles. Like, that's just stupid. I would never say that. The problem with Tesla is not that it's a bad company because it's really not. It's not a bad company. The problem is it's at a ridiculous valuation. This stock has been priced for perfection for a long time, and it is still kind of sort of priced for perfection, even though it's gone down tremendously. That's just my opinion. So in my opinion, I would not buy Tesla here. Some people are going to disagree and going to say, I think this is the buying opportunity of a lifetime. I will be honest. Historically, you've been right. Historically, when Tesla drops like this and has these moments where a lot of people are turning against it and they're upset and they don't like the company, typically you've been right. Typically, when you buy the dip, it does go up. The problem is, in my opinion, it's not going up because of the fundamentals. It has this insane coat behind it. And you, and, and, and you know what's crazy about Tesla, too? Tesla's very unique because not only does it have a coat of retail investors, but it has a coat of big money investors, like people with millions and millions of dollars to put into this thing or big funds like Ross Gerber with Gerber Kawasaki. This guy's like a coat investor with Tesla, and he's he's like dang near a billionaire. At the very least, he, he uh, manages billions of dollars in assets. You know, you've got Gary Black, you've got Dan Ives, you've got the Munster guy, whatever. Like you have really big, well-known people on Wall Street who also are like in this weird coat that Tesla's the greatest thing ever. And no matter what, they're going to keep buying it. It's the craziest thing. So I would argue that part of that is kind of the reason why you see these absolutely insane swings in Tesla. But I still don't think that Tesla is the appropriate buy at this price. Now, I do think you go back to the chart. I do think somewhere around 113, maybe even 100 or over or under 100. That actually might be compelling. If it gets there, I don't know if it'll get there. Now, let's just go over just a little bit of the tweets that I saw. So, number one, Ross Gerber, we talked about him. This guy was a huge mega bull in Tesla and probably still is, but he's been very bearish over the last, like, few months. So, now Ross is saying, for over a year, I've been warning about this potential reality. Now it's here. It's time for shareholders to assess the blame where due. The Tesla board of directors should be replaced immediately with independent directors as required by law, Tesla. So this is Ross's opinion. And for those who don't know, Ross, I believe like a few years ago, tried to actually like get himself on the board of directors. Like it, it didn't work, but he tried to launch a bid for it. That didn't work out for him. But yeah, he's been pretty bearish on Tesla lately. I mean, he's been like just losing his mind about how Elon is this and the board is that and they're not executing and blah, blah, blah. And then you have another huge Tesla bull, Gary Black, who, if I'm not mistaken, I think he actually said on his Twitter that he sold some Tesla stock. But either way, he he admitted that he had been bullish on Tesla for the last like three years in a row and he's been wrong every single year. Every single year since like 2021, Gary Black gave price targets on Tesla and Tesla never hit those price targets. Never. It never ended the year with those price targets. So I just think that that's hilarious. And then you have other people um, like Dan Ives, who said that if you looked up train wreck in the dictionary, you'd see a picture of Tesla's uh, Q1 nightmare. So Tesla absolutely has very negative sentiment and it's being felt by the entire Tesla community. And you're starting to see a little bit of a civil war. You're starting to see people going back and forth a lot more on uh, Twitter. Uh, you got people making these clickbait bearish videos about Tesla on their YouTubes and everybody's bashing Elon Musk, which honestly, I think is very well warranted because the guy's nuts. And he's continuing to show every day that uh, he might not be the best guy to be running Tesla at this point, just to be honest. And then obviously our favorite grifter, me, Kevin, who we cover on this channel a lot. Um, now he's talking trash about Elon Musk, which is funny because just like a year or so ago, you know, he was so happy to. You know, like he was like, I don't know if you guys remember but me. Kevin was doing everything he could to try and get Elon to acknowledge him. Like he kept tweeting at him and quote and commenting under every Elon tweet. Like he was just so thirsty for Elon. He just really wanted Elon to recognize him and at least act like he knew him. And he even went to like some event that Elon hosted. And then he like went up and asked a question and it was it was crazy. But yeah, even Kevin's turning against Elon Musk now. So now he's saying with certainty. Tweets like this will alienate some Tesla buyers. Why would a left-leaning voter support a company run by a person who actively 
uh, is promoting the opposite of their interests. Many agree with Elon. The point, though, some level of buyers will avoid Tesla because of this. And you can see the tweet says, I voted 100 percent down until a few years ago. Now I think we need a red wave or America's toast. So basically me, Kevin, and he's not the only one. There are other people in the Tesla community who are not fans of what Elon Musk uh, is tweeting. They're not fans of the fact that he keeps tweeting about politics. They they don't like it at all. It actually makes them uh, really mad. And then you got this Gene Munster guy. Uh, he's another guy who's a pretty big player on Wall Street. Um, he's not really a big fan of the Tesla deliveries either, and he's saying that they're ugly. But anyway, the bottom line, the main point of this video, guys, is that the Tesla story is crumbling. The growth story is truly crumbling, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next few quarters um, with this stock. But ultimately, the only thing that I will say is, you know, just be very careful with all these grifters who keep telling you to buy, 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 and don't take into account how important valuations are, especially with a crazy hype stock like this. You know, like you just, when it comes to investing, you got to be smart. And I think the unfortunate part is you have a lot of bag holders who probably bought Tesla somewhere over here, you know, back when Tesla was like, Four hundred, three hundred dollars. Matter of fact, I would I would just go ahead and say this: most people who are shareholders in Tesla were not early investors. They started buying Tesla back during the hype. So I would say the most investors' average cost in Tesla is probably two fifty, two sixty, two forty, something like that. So they're all down significantly on Tesla, and now they're just all probably hoping and praying that the stock goes back up. That's just kind of where we're at. But uh, yeah. Anyway, that's what's going on with Tesla stock. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, even though I don't read them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do read the comments. I just don't respond that much anymore. Uh, but I do read them. Uh, anyway, that'll go include today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.